Welcome back to another episode of the Nutrition Spot Podcast. Today, we're going to talk all things on how to improve your body image. Yes, this is a highly requested topic because who doesn't struggle with their body image at all points in time in their life, you know, like, yeah. is, does it ever go away? Well, I don't know if we can ever make it go away. And I think that's one of the misconceptions about like body positivity and, and improving body image is we think we have, we think we're trying to like love our bodies. Mm-hmm. Let's not go too that far. You know, like, how about we just get to a place where we're just like not hating Thinking everything about, about our body? Yeah. Try not to yeah. think about it like constantly, right? <clears throat> exactly. Exactly. Actually, like, a- no, you go. go I was going to say, when you ask the question, who doesn't, who doesn't, you know, worry about their body image? You know, who came to my mind? Who? Kids. Until yeah. thoughts are implanted, right? So true. So but true. They're just like loving their bodies. I'm like loving yeah. the freedom. I'm just seeing it in my toddler right now. I'm like, I know, go. right? And like my oh six-year-old, yeah. she will eat, like if she eats a big meal and of yeah. course her stomach distends like any human being. Yeah. He like thinks it's the funniest thing. Like, look at all the like noodles in my belly, you know? And like, just like, yes, girl. Yes. I love your belly full of noodles. Like, it's just like, oh man. I, I would wish. love to get to a place like that. Just like, yeah. that's what, how it's supposed to be. Anywho, yeah. <laughs> like you were saying, let's meet where we're at in life right yeah. now. And we're trying to get to a place where it's just not encompassing all of our thoughts and therefore all of our actions and limiting how we're living our life. Exactly. Right? Not only limit, like maybe missing out on th- on things in life because of body image and being scared to do things and saying no because you're worried about how other people are going to perceive you in your body, but also all the way to the eating. You know, if yep. we're not feeling happy about our body, that's going to influence our relationship with food, which is going to influence all of our eating and blah, 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 you know, things that we talk about all the time. So exactly, it's a big deal. It's really tough for a lot of us. And we talk to a lot of ladies who will straight up not go, like Nikki's saying, like go to functions. They won't leave their house. They won't take pictures. They won't, you know, there's so, there's a long list of things that they won't do because they're just like waiting to lose the last five pounds to then feel good about themselves. Yes. I used to be that type of person for sure. Me too. Me too. Said no to a lot of things. Just body image, self-confidence, you know, they kind of go hand in hand. And, and so, yeah, let's, let's chat about it. Like what, what is body image, you know, in a sense, like what, where does it stem? Because a lot of us are truly a hundred percent believe that if we lose weight, it'll get better. Like we will feel better about ourselves. But unfortunately that's not the case 99% of the time. Uh, but because body image actually doesn't really have anything to do with our body and is in the brain. It's our thoughts and our feelings about ourselves, not our actually bo- actual body. And if you're kind of like, no, that's not true. If I lost five pounds, I'd feel better. What happens, what we see is the women that lose the weight and then there's something else, right? Something else is not good enough now. And then something else is not good enough now. And something else is not good enough now. And we're always trying to reach some sort of perfection because how we value ourselves is based on all these external things. And we're trying to fit into this ever-changing society of beauty and looks and it's just unachievable. And so we're never, we're never getting that confirmation of I love myself now because it's all external based. I need to say one thing too, because myself and a current client we have right now, um, had a a slightly different relationship with our body image. We lived a life that, you know, society, we could get to the point where we're, where we were so thin that we were just like on that top of that, like the hierarchy, you know, uh, just, this is not a good hierarchy, you know, just like um, society would give us a lot of positive reinforcement to be, because we were that thin. And so it gave us a sense of like false confidence, right? So that's how we were, feeling great about ourselves. But she said something, the best way to describe this the other day, she's like, so I, that felt great. Like I felt like I achieved that and that was informing how I felt about myself. However, everything else in life felt off or wrong. 
And I was like, oh my gosh, that's the best way to describe it because it comes at a cost. Like, even if you were to get to that point where you do feel externally confident, because all of a sudden the imperfections that you saw on your body are now gone for the most part, like Nikki said, there's always something, (laughs) but you're like, you feel like you get to that point where you're like, no, 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 no. If I was this way, I would for sure step out in the world confident. Like I had that. And I'm this client that I'm talking about had that. However, everything else in life felt wrong because we were ignoring all the signals from inside which was, you know, eat more, you know, like listen to your body, listen to your intuition. We were just saying no to all those kinds of signals. So it affected everything else in our life. That was a small little tangent. So I just wanted to say if anyone's thinking like- Can I challenge that? Yes, please. Because I, as much as I see what you're saying, you had more, you had more confidence with going out and doing things, but your body image, like we talk about like what body image actually is, was so poor because it was so based on external that's, validation. Yes, is it, that's exactly it. And that's why like everything feels so off because you don't feel like Nick, what Nikki is saying is like, you're not even who you are. I no. was not who I was supposed to be. And I felt so shaky inside because yes. I was living this mirage of a person yeah, I, I'm getting chills, you guys. Like this is, and you so know what? Big. So we weren't really going to go this route with this podcast. <laughs> no, but, sorry, but it's okay. Like I think it's so wonderful because I think that's what people see on social media. Yeah. So they see these people who look what like whatever the ideal yep. bodies are for the time, and they're of course they're in bathing suits, they're on the yeah. beach, they're showing this like you know filter perfect life through Instagram. Yeah. yeah. And we don't see like how hurt they are inside. That's exactly it. Yeah, you, know, you so- have, yeah, sorry. Yeah, you don't have the judgment, the external judgment in your head and you like the perceived outside judgment. So you feel free. You feel like the sense of false confidence, Nikki's calling it out. But yeah, you're not even being, you're not even, how did you say it? Like you're just crumbling inside. Like I th- yeah. we think about, we talk about Stephanie Buttermore a ton. I feel like that was kind of her. Like she she had this like idealistic body that she yeah. portrayed on the internet and was struggling so hard on the inside because her body image was actually poor that she went on her intuitive eating journey because she That's was like, was, I yeah. Can't, yeah, I can't take another moment of this, like trying to deprive everything in my life to look this way. I love to that. Get the so I need. That's exactly the perfect way to describe it. So even if you feel like you would feel better about yourself losing 10 pounds at the expense of, you know, not eating X, Y, and Z or not fixing your relationship with food, da, 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 da. Th- that means your body image, image is still poor, is what Nikki's saying. Even though we've been sold this idea that you're going to be healthier and happier and more beautiful in less than, you know, 10 pounds less to go. And it's not even, it's not true. I've lived that life. Like Nikki's saying, it's, it's not true and it's, it's terrible. Yeah, and exactly. Yeah. yeah. So another way to, to show like how body image is in our head, cause like it can be really hard. Like we understand when you're in that moment of feeling that desperate want to want to change your body, well, you're probably pissed off at what we're saying right now. You're like, you yeah. guys suck. Like, no, yeah. I, I need to lose weight. I'll feel better. But let's just talk about examples of how body image is more mind-based than actual body-based one I think that most people can relate to is looking back on pictures you know you look back on a picture of yourself as a teenager maybe when you first started feeling body insecure and being like what the heck was I ever worried about you know I'd love to see them because I ripped them all up and that's another isn't that bad you guys that's sad. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Good. But see, so you hated yourself in that moment. Yeah. You know, and then the same thing hits, you know, in your 20s, you don't want to take pictures or you see a picture of yourself and you're like, oh, I look horrible. And it just keeps going, you know, then you're 30 and then you're looking back on your 20s and you're like, why did I ever like, why didn't I just live my life? And why did, you know, like, why did I hate myself and want to change, you know, like, and it just keeps going mm-hmm. because it's in our brain and it's not actually about our body so true this is just like like when we grow up when pictures were actually in paper 
<laughs> not digital. Oh yeah, exactly. I always think I see these trends. Side note, on like Insta or TikTok and Instagram, where people show like their high school pictures or something like that. Like, yeah. as, and, and I'm like, oh yeah, that'd be nice to do. I don't even know where those pictures are. Yeah, <laughs> some photo album in my parents' ba- attic or somewhere. something. You know. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. anyways, uh, another great example of of this would be different cultures. Different mm-hmm. cultures have different ideal body types and so you know you might go to a different country and they value a pear-shaped body and a lot people are of loved, other cultures and, you know, do mm-hmm. yeah, and they're the women are loving that or the men you know I even see some I saw some National Geographic thing pop up either on my tv or something where the bigger the belly the men have mm-hmm. the higher like the status quo for them is because that mm-hmm. portrays wealth and abundance because of food and all of that and so like if we can go to different countries and a different body is valued again Mm -hmm. it's so funny same with women I was reading about this a while ago in different cultures where yeah fuller figure and there's no limit here we're not saying like oh a specific type of pear shape like all figures in other cultures yeah like Nikki's saying it it signifies fertility prosperity health healthy you have access to food right so all these things that are like very attractive um in other cultures that we've just been our sense of that has been distorted and i just want to say there's a really good book on how it got distorted by sabrina strings uh racism's roots in diet culture something like that sorry sabrina Check it out. It's a really good book explaining how our views on a fuller figure got massively distorted at the hands of the slave trade. So there's a reason why we got where we are today. So another great example is um, when Shane and I were growing up, like heroin chic, skinny as you can be, bones protruding all over your body was the ideal body type. So of so of course we all just like starved ourselves to look like that but now it's like the you know the kardashians like five years ago and their bbls and and all of this like fuller still skinny but fuller you know it's not it's not like it's other culture style but type of of style a body is in and it's this ever-changing idealistic you know again like it's like it's all about what we think we need to look like what we think is beautiful and we think is going to make us happy but that body actually changes so you know I if you want to say so- too it's like not like we like thought of this on our own because yeah. you're like it's what we think it's, right. it's like what goes in creates yes. what we think yes, um it's like you had a story about that yeah so actually uh, yeah thank you for reminding me so about the butt thing about the butt thing so I'm someone who's had uh, I guess had I don't have a big butt but I have a butt I have a butt. And so I went backpacking to Australia 2005. I was 19 and I met this girl. She was also from Canada. We became fast friends and we just like share clothes and stuff. And I remember being so jealous of her because 2005 was still heroin chic style um, body because she had no butt. She had zero butt. And I tried to borrow all her for for shorts and I couldn't because they were like, my butt cheeks would hang out. Like, I don't even know if I could get them over, some of them over my butt because I had a butt. And I remember just being so insecure about that. Like, I never really wore bathing suit bottoms on their own. I always had shorts or something over because I had a butt and it wasn't what was in at the time. And now I think tables are turned where now because having a butt is in, she's probably the one that's like, oh my gosh, like, I wish I had a butt. I need to go, like, like, I don't know if she thinks this way, but, you know, like, if we're thinking about those body insecurity thoughts that we have, she's now probably feeling insecure because she has no butt. Mm -hmm. Whereas before, that was, like, ideal. You can't win in this, like, made-up game. So we can just stop playing it, right? Like we were saying before, if if we are thinking these things, where are these thoughts coming from? So we can start feeding our brain intentionally different sources of information, different images is so powerful. Exactly. Clean up your Instagram feed. I know that we're kind of drilling this in, but I really just want, I want you to listen to this podcast and be like, okay, I understand why they're saying it's my brain and not my body. Um, 
so we're going to, I'm going to dive into one more example, maybe even two, but I think one that can be so, so eye-opening is the fact that like, if I, let's say I go to the beach and I have low body image, I might, I might be looking at it. Well, I will be looking at other people. Cause that's one thing when you have poor body image, you're judging other people's bodies. Totally. And so I might be like, man, I wish I had her body while she's looking at somebody else going. I wish I had her body. Mm-hmm. And while she's looking at somebody else going, I wish I had her body. And while mm-hmm. someone might even be looking at me going, I wish I had her body. Mm-hmm. Again, because it's in the brain. And then the one final one is, <laughs> sorry, is how mm-hmm. every, how we can see people. And I think this is what triggers a lot of people on Instagram, the people that are still quite fat phobic. We can see people in bodies that maybe aren't what the idealistic body is in the, in this current moment who are happy and confident. And like, how how can they be like that if it was about the body, you know? Mm, I love that. And a great uh, YouTube channel for that is Style Like You, the letter U. I love that. I just love watching everybody on that YouTube channel because that example Nikki just gave there and all shapes and sizes on that channel. And they legitimately you can feel it through the screen love themselves and they love their body and and they say the same thing okay if i've been able to reach a point where i genuinely love my body more now than i did when it was thinner of course it's all in the head then you know like and they're so grateful that they did the work to get to that point where they now are fully living their lives full rather than being at the beach wondering about other people's bodies or worrying about other people's thoughts about their bodies stuff like that exactly. right yes and again we are not here to to make anyone who wants to lose weight feel bad no we don't want you to think that we just want you to know that body image is completely separate from body weight and working on your body image at any point in your life is beneficial at any weight that you're at mm-hmm. if you just if and we see this a lot too with people who have bariatric surgery if we don't address that poor body image, the weight loss isn't going to fix it and can cause problems, still continue to cause problems because we never address the body image. So you can want to be improving your body image and be actively pursuing weight loss or weight gain at the same time. So I want to say too, like that was a huge thing that helped me with my intuitive eating journey and, and actually helped my body settle uh, its its natural weight because I was no longer, because I did the work and the time, <laughs> oh my gosh, to like stop criticizing my body and stop, and we're going to talk about all this, um, body checking in the mirror, et cetera, et cetera, putting in the time to fix my body image, it allowed my body to relax and all my heightened false hunger, which we always talk about to like chill out and settle so that my true appetite came through. So working on your body image actually helps you get to where you want to be, which is like feeling really good in your body in all the ways. So yeah, it's a really, really great way to go about it. Exactly. So how do we go about it? (laughs) I mean, it's going to be different for everybody. But we're just going to go over some of the things that we found helpful for us, We, our clients find helpful, and that we talk about. So, of course, the first thing is going to be noticing mm-hmm. your negative body image thoughts. We talk a lot about getting out of automatic thinking, getting out of your subconscious brain, getting out of this like cycle of not even noticing these negative things that run our lives, whether that's with eating or with body image. So we need to take the time to notice. I was thinking one of our clients last night, she was, she's just in this new stage of noticing her thoughts, both on her food freedom journey. And it's just for so many of us, it's related to our body image. Right. And so her, she was noticing her thoughts of like, I can't have more food because I've already gained too much weight. Right. So all, all she's doing right now is noticing those thoughts, bringing them to the forefront so that they're not dictating her outcomes. When we manage our mind, manage our thoughts, that's when the outcomes start to change. So for her, it's she's working on the false hunger. So the false hunger starts to come down. And if it's if you're just like, no, I just want to love, I want to work on like not hating myself so much. It's the same thing. It's the more we start to just observe our thoughts, it's like a, it's a Buddhist technique 
the more they will start to just dissipate. They're not your true self. They're made exactly. by our mind because it's out of fear. Our fear, our, our body, sorry, guys, our mind's job <laughs> is to keep us safe. And so it throws out these thoughts of like, what if, what if, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, the fear-based thoughts, they're there to help protect you. But <laughs> we could also see that they're not giving us the outcome that we truly desire. So all we can do is start noticing them. And the more we do that, they actually start to float away. They start to dissipate. Yeah. So notice them and neutralize them. Yeah. We got to tell our brain, because again, just like Shana was saying, our brain does these things to protect us. But the other thing our brain is really bad at, sub our subconscious brain, is knowing fact from fiction. And so whatever you tell yourself, your, your brain believes is true. So if you're telling yourself, like, my body is bad, you know, this is bad about my body, this sucks, I need to change this, your brain is going to believe you. But vice versa, if you change those thoughts and you – the first step is neutralizing them. You don't have to go to positive. Again, we're not trying to, like, love everything about our body. But if we can just change that narrative, your subconscious brain will start to believe that that's the truth which it is because we need to be kind to ourselves. <laughs> you know, we really need to talk to ourselves like we're our best friends, not this, like the, some of the things we say ourselves are just horrible. I was, I'm going to do a reel on that tomorrow because it's just like, could you imagine if you said to the, your best friend, the shit that you say to yourself, mm. you know, if, if you're like, oh, like your pants look so horrible or like, you're such mm -hmm. a slob, you know, like, mm -hmm. things like that. or, or why can't I do anything right? I don't know. Like, I just have to like sit down and think of the things I used to say to myself on, on the daily because they're so mean. Yeah. I was like, I don't even know what I'm saying to myself because it's been so a while. Like Nikki and I deliberately practice compassion towards ourselves. Like, I don't have mean thoughts towards yeah. myself anymore. <laughs> you know, if anything, they're too permissive, but anywho, <laughs> that's probably a negative thought right there. Um, yeah. So do the work because you can get to a point where we were so self-critical. So if we can yeah. do it, you know, you guys, it's, it's just like one baby step at a time. Okay, yeah. So notice our thought, and, neutralize it. And it's it. like a, I just want to say, and it's like a self-fulfilling cycle. Yeah. So if you, if you are talking negatively about yourself, you're going to feel bad about your body and you're going to have exactly negative it. body experiences. But if you start neutralizing those and saying positive things about yourself, you're going to have good things positive experiences in your body and it's going to affirm to your brain oh yeah you know that whatever that positive thing is that's the truth I think we should go into the immersion therapy example from our client from there sure right so do so the next thing is do the things that scare you right yeah. all well, those actually, things before that I want to say stop body checking okay <laughs> Because I think that the thoughts go and then like at the same time, or if we're looking in a mirror all the time, fair enough, we're going to be like, it's just not going to go well. Put the right? blinders on when it comes to the mirror, you guys. And the I scale said, for sure. Yeah. The scale and the mirror don't need to be there. Like maybe just get a head mirror that you can do your, your, you know, your face and your hair with Yeah, and put the rest away. Like imagine what would your day be like if when you rolled out of bed, you were just like oh, I feel rested. I feel good. Today's going to be a good day. And then you went in your closet and you picked out an outfit that felt good. Mm -hmm. Not looked good, you know, like felt good. Mm -hmm. you, it, you know, the pants fit well, the shirt fits good or the dress, whatever you decide to wear. And you just walked out of your room and you went on your merry way. Mm -hmm. Like that puts you into such a better place in your life than getting up, stepping on the scale, being upset about that, looking in the mirror, scrutinizing every inch of your body. Again, because we're just influenced with all these unrealistic bodies all the time. And then putting on clothes. And if and 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 we also tell our clients, you know, wear clothes that feel good, have a wardrobe that feels good. If you're putting on clothes that are too small, your underwear is digging in, your pants are digging in, your shirt is because we're you know, focus. There's so many layers here, but we're focused on sizes, mm -hmm. horrible women's sizes, which are also a whole nother topic. Mm -hmm. It's just like, it's just not going to be okay. This is such a good exercise. You guys just try it, go and do exactly what Nikki described and then notice what's coming up in your mind. 
if it's like, well, what, you know, what if I wear something that someone else did, da, 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 da. what, what if I look, da, 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 da. like, that's a really good, if, if you are having trouble right now, no, no shame. Cause this used to be me. If you're having trouble doing this exercise freely and like zero cares what other people think, that is a really good indicator that your how you feel inside is completely informed by the external. That's literally how I navigated my entire life. What do other people think? What should I do? What should I wear? How should I, how much should I eat? All of that informed how I felt inside. And it wasn't until I started undoing these layers of like, why do I care? Why do I care? Like, actually, how do I feel? What do I actually want to do? That's oh my gosh, I'm getting chills. Like that is life changing. That's when you become yeah. who you're meant to be. And that's when all the things that you are hoping for and like beyond that start to happen. So it's really powerful. It's not just like, oh, I'll, I'll, I hate my body less. It's like massive things start to happen. Anyway, yeah. so try this, try it on and start noticing like the fears that you're, that are coming up by you not looking in the mirror to see how you, the rest of you looks, you know, kind of thing. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Huge. Put them and like if you're like, I don't know if I can do that. Put a blanket over your mirror in your room yeah. or something. You know, like find a way. If you're if there's too many way. excuses happening, there's yeah, something just, there. You know, start on yeah, start on a day maybe if that you're not going into work or something where if you're worried about that, if you're working, if you're worried about like not being put together or something. But really, like, come on, ladies, we all know what outfits yeah. go together. That's like we safe one on, yeah, like exactly. The- Exactly. Throw on a dress and then you just have to put on some sandals Jeez. or something, yeah. you know, like um, you can do it. Just try it. Just we just just try it. Yeah. And if you're able to do it and notice that you're like, oh, I'm I'm feeling really good in my body because the mirror didn't tell me to feel otherwise. Like ding, ding, ding. That's what yeah. we mean. Like you don't need the mirror or the scale to tell you how you feel about yourself today. Yeah. That is what we've been conditioned to believe. And it's not true. Exactly. And when we feel good, we start doing good. We're like, oh, that's when your true appetite will be able to start coming out clear because you're not up in your head about like what you look like or how much you should eat and all of that. It That just clouds everything. Exactly. Exactly. And then that goes also into do what scares you. Yeah. Because again, that voice in your head that's like, you can't go to the beach with your friends because then you're going to wear a bathing suit and like, are like you know, it's funny because I can't even say what we're fearing because it, because it's, our brain is extrapolating something like that's not going to happen. Like wh- what is going to happen if we go to the beach with our friends? You know, most likely nothing unless you're surrounded by not great people that might make comments, which that would be a good, that would be a hundred percent thing to fear. Totally get that. If that's the case, maybe get some new friends. 100%. But like for the most part, if we're with good people, people who love us, we're going to go to the beach and we're going to have a good time. Mm -hmm. You know, and one of our clients, she was, she, she didn't really have a problem going to the beach, but she really missed wearing bikinis. And she hasn't really worn bikinis since she had babies. And they went on a trip, a long trip to Costa Rica and she brought her favorite bikini and she's. And she said one day she picked it up and she looked at it and she's like, oh, no, I shouldn't. Shouldn't wear this. You know, which is so funny because as like an outsider, like, why the hell wouldn't you want to wear a bikini? Like, why why can't you wear a bikini? But again, body image. She put it on and she wore almost every single day for the whole trip. And it was like immersion therapy. It was like by the end of it, she it wasn't even like a second thought. And she was like, what did I fear about putting on a freaking bikini? You know? Mm-hmm. And so that like ties back into the, when we're talking about our brain trying to protect us. And so yeah. all this fear that the brain was putting out was making her hesitate. And so yeah. when she was like, screw it, I'm going to do the thing that I actually want to do, which is wear a bikini. I just would, I like yeah. bikinis more than two, one pieces. And she, it was hard for her at first, but when she just like stuck to her guns and did what she actually wanted to do and put her head down her brain had then evidence that the worst case scenario that it was trying to protect her from, which was obviously, as we know, it's all ridiculous. Then, and she survived. Her brain was like, oh, this is really nice. Yeah, We like bikinis. We should do this more often. 
<laughs> and she's yeah. like, okay, thanks for getting on the team there, Mr. Brain. <laughs> Mrs. Brain. Exactly. And it doesn't have to be like wearing a bikini at the beach. It could be like if you, let's say you want to try rock climbing and you don't yeah. do it because you're worried about being in a harness or how you're going to look climbing up the wall. Because right. again, that, that was the kind of stuff that I I struggled with a lot with body image. It wasn't so much like putting on a bathing suit. I didn't feel confident in a bathing suit, but I was okay doing that. And I'd, I'd usually wear shorts or something with it. But like it was doing things that I really wanted to try, like rock climbing and things like that, because I didn't, I was just worried about how I would look doing it, you know, like how I'd be perceived that really low, like comp- body confidence that way. So try those things. Oh, are you frozen? I didn't no. know if you're frozen. <laughs> I tried it. Like, I just, was in a moment. <laughs> you know, like just anytime we can push back and just go two feet in on those things that scare us and realize that the worst case scenario isn't going to happen. Mm-hmm. It's just a really good feeling. And it goes and and it increases not only like helps with the body image, but increases your confidence. And I feel like when our body image is poor, our confidence goes mm-hmm. low, you know, like they are really hand in hand. And so if we can do things that build confidence in our life, it can help with that body image aspect. Amen. I so agree. Like I confidence still- that isn't about how we look, you know? <laughs> yeah. The whole... I'm so much more interesting than the the number on the scale, you know that thing, you know, exactly. Like the, or the the le- how does the least the interesting, interesting thing about thing me about you, yeah. yeah, is your body and yeah, yeah. And there's something to that. If you are like slaying at life, you have less reason to care what other people think about you because you're right. slaying, and you've got yeah. people in your life that love you and support you, and they're lifting you up and when you have that like slay confidence about you, it's very magnetizing. Very much. Like to the think right about people. old, wrinkly, rich men yeah. who are like, don't give an F, you know, like there's the, yeah. Okay, you know, let's all aim to be that. <laughs> let's all be old, wrinkly men. Exactly. They don't, they're slaying and they don't care that they're old you know like he they're not yeah. making excuses for themselves um yeah <laughs> i want to say you guys it stings when people comment about our weight right yes. I, I we get that it stings but that's what it does it stings we don't die and if we want to create a new generation of people that are not focused on weight and commenting on other people's weight and think it's okay to be like, oh, you've gained blah, 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 blah. What do you, you know, stuff like that. Some of us need to step out. And there's a lot, there's a huge movement. Yeah. Put these people in your Instagram feed so they give you confidence like, oh, she's doing it. I can do it. She's slaying at life, you know? And and I want to say too, again, easier said than done, but like, don't let those people win. Mm Mm-hmm. Don't let those people shrink you down, make you not live your life because they're idiots, you know, like because they are, they have issues going on. Because if they're making comments, they're not slaying at life. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that also have low confidence, low body image, and they're trying to bring you down to their level. And we got to stop letting them. Mm -hmm. Like we really have to stop letting other people dim our lights because- we're going to look back. Those are those are the things that when you're on your deathbed, you're going to look back and be like, what the frick? Did I really never go to the beach again because Sally Sue made made a comment to me? You know, I, I didn't go to the beach one other time in my life because of that. I gave that person that much power, you know, like. This is huge, just, you guys. We feel so passionate about this. Literally, this is the thing that's holding back society right now. Like each one of us inside has something that we're meant to do here. Like you are really, really special. And this whole like body image is keeping us trapped as a society and like angry and just like we're living really, really small. So if we can get past this, like break out of it and like really be who you're meant to be by putting aside the body stuff, yeah, that's when things get really magical. Yeah. Yeah. There's something I was going to say. Shoot. 
don't oh yeah like... because like there's the world is full of karens <laughs> okay. you know just to keep going like literally no matter what you look like no matter what you do no matter the life choices you make there's always gonna be a karen who has something to say about it yeah that's so true. and i i feel like so overcoming you know improving body image improving confidence something that i've worked so much in my life to do paired with becoming an online entrepreneur where you're putting your yourself out there open to criticism this has been a huge takeaway for me yeah like you you can either be yourself be have the messages that you're passionate about out there and just do your thing and you're going to be open to criticism or you can dim yourself and still try to fit in a box and still get criticized. Can you imagine the impact that Nikki wouldn't have had if she allowed all the body image to dim her light? How many mm-hmm. thousands of people that wouldn't have been helped by your message? Yeah. There's something else I was going to say. Oh, yeah. So if you're if your brain, we totally get it because – these thoughts are really hardwired because we've practiced them for so long. So if your brain is still like, yeah, but I just really want to go down the path of losing a little bit more weight. I want to say it one more time. Like I've been there. I've been to the point where it's like the thin of the thin. And like Nikki was saying before, it means that you still have really, really poor body image. If you can't let that external validation go, And go on that different path of, okay, I'm going to listen to my body. I'm going to let my body heal. I'm going to let it do its thing and go for the things that I actually want to do right now before the quote unquote weight loss and just see how that starts to feed into your life and how the ball starts to roll that way. Give it a year, give it a year and see how things can really be like, oh my gosh. This is all the stuff that I was looking for before when I was trying to lose weight and I didn't even need to lose weight to have that. That's what we're saying. And one other thing is like, try on this thought, okay, what? how would I be acting in life if everyone had the same body as me today, right? Then it's yes. like, is if everyone just looked like me, what would I be doing? And that is kind of like it informs whether or not your desire to change your body is external based or internal based, right? Exactly. And then, and then if you're like, well, I need to lose weight for my health. Yeah. Then we also encourage you to try this. Focus on those health promoting behaviors. Mm-hmm. You know, learning intuitive eating skills, creating balanced meals, adding adding veggies and fruits where you can like – moving your body in ways that feel good, those, getting extra sleep, all those things. Mm-hmm. Tell yourself you're going to do those despite what your weight does because mm-hmm. weight isn't the determinant of what our health is. It's these behaviors that add up over time that are actually determining our health. And so, again, we're not saying if you want to lose weight, it's bad or you're doing anything wrong, but just to really, we got to we gotta work on the body image at the same time as the body stuff or we're not we're never going to find peace and happiness that's a really good place to end it that was really great we hope you guys like this convo is there anything else we want to add i would just say you know if you if you like this you found it helpful or moving share it with someone that you think would love it too we would really appreciate that absolutely okay we'll talk to you guys next week okay bye bye